we can look at this set of fossil layers and tell a whole story about this area. It's pretty cool. Hopefully you said that you saw some snails first because it's at the bottom. Maybe you tried to talk about this one, which looks like a slug-like creature. Maybe you said this looks like, I think it looks kind of like a leaf. And this looks like some kind of worm. Um, then you said something about more snails. Maybe you saw something that looked like a butterfly or a ray. Um, this one looks like a lobster. You might have mentioned that. This looks like a worm with tentacles, maybe like an octopus almost. And then maybe you said that you started to see some fish in the next layer and some plant life for the first time. And this looks like some sort of swimming creature that has bones and legs. So those are the first legs that we see, but it's obviously in the ocean still because this is fish. And then last, we start to see some animals that have some legs that are in a position where they look like they are actually walking. So you can say that eventually you got to land. Great job if you got all of that. Next, we're going to tell a harder story, which is like a two-part story. We're going to talk about how the Grand Canyon was formed. And you did a little bit of this at the beginning of the unit, but we're going to do more. First, I wanted you to see where the Grand Canyon is. You can see it's over here. Boston is right near here. That's actually Cape Cod right there. And the Grand Canyon is all the way over here in Arizona. So they are very far apart. And then just look at some pictures of the Grand Canyon because they're pretty amazing. You can see the river in the middle of each of them, which is a clue about how this canyon was formed. We also see that there are all these layers. And we know now that those layers got formed in a certain order, which we didn't know the first time we looked at the Grand Canyon. We're gonna read a text about the Grand Canyon and, af and how it was formed. And afterwards, know that you are going to be trying to um, write about how the Grand Canyon was formed. So I'm going to be circling words here that are really important for you to put in your writing. How the Grand Canyon was formed. One of the Earth's most spectacular natural features is the mile deep Grand Canyon in Northern Arizona. It is also one of the best examples of erosion, that's gonna definitely have to be in there, where the rock or earth is carried away and weathering where rock is worn away or broken down. Looking from the ring of the canyon the color, to the Colorado River below, we're definitely gonna need to talk about a river, visitors can see many layers of different kinds of rock. Some of the rocks are as big as, are, are as, much as two billion years two billion years old. And this is where we're gonna, this is like sort of our overall explanation. Now it's gonna go in detail about each of the parts. From this picture below, I think this part is gonna be about the layers and how they are formed. Before the Grand Canyon began to cut down, the sedimentary rock, ooh, I bet I'm gonna have to talk about that, that is made of, that it is made of needed to form. This happened over many millions of years. These sediments were deposited in many different environments, oceans, desert sand dunes, rivers, floodplains, wetlands, and more. The Grand Canyon sedimentary rock is evidence that the Earth's climate was changing throughout these several million years. So we're going to say that sediments were described, were deposited. I don't need to name all of these places, but we'll say it was like many types of sediments. Something like that. They're saying it, those sediments came from all different environments, so therefore there are different types of sediment. And I can see that because each of these layers is a different color. So it must have been sediment of a different kind. Moving down, we're gonna now start to find out about other things. The Grand Canyon itself began forming five or six million years ago after the Rocky Mountains were formed. When rain fell, water ran down the sloping land and began to erode the soil, making channels or cuts in the ground. 
These channels eventually became a path for the Colorado River. We said that that was going to be an important word. Over millions of years, the Colorado River kept eroding the soil and carving out the canyon. I like that word carving. I might put that in there too. We know that erosion from water from the Colorado River was a major force that formed the Grand Canyon. Water and can carrying sand abraded, oh, sand abrasion, that's an important science word, the sides of the canyon walls. Water seeped into cracks in the rocks and froze in the winter. Ooh, that's something we've learned about in class. Rocks freezing, water freezing inside of rocks. We know that that's a type of weathering called, what is it called? If you said frost wedging or ice wedging, you are correct. Then the pull of gravity caused the section of the wall to collapse, making the canyon wider. Wind also helped ooh, shape the canyon. So it, and it says bits of sand were blown. So I know that that's wind abrasion. And that is a type of weathering. So I can talk about all of those. I would say that this whole section here is all about erosion and weathering. So you're gonna answer this, these questions about how the Grand Canyon was formed in two different parts. It's gonna ask you about how the layers were formed, and then it's gonna ask you about how the canyon was formed. And so that's why I broke this into two different parts for you, because you can see that up here, this first paragraph was all about the layers being formed up here. And then the next two paragraphs down below are about erosion and weathering. You're going to go write those and then come back for the next video.